Welcome to this video on the amazing life cycle of chickens. I'll cover each stage of development a chicken goes through from egg to death. If you enjoy this video and want more, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more content about poultry. Chickens start their life as eggs, laid by hens in a cosy nest. In the beginning, the egg has a tiny bullseye called a blastoderm. The rooster mates with the hen and five hours after fertilization, cell division of the resulting zygote begins. This initial stage of development happens within the isthmus, which is where the inner and outer shell membranes of the egg form. Once cell division has commenced, the zygote is now called an embryo. After four hours in the uterus, the egg now contains 256 cells. The chick embryo initially forms one layer over the yolk, then develops into ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm layers. Organs and tissues develop from these layers, nervous system and feathers from the ectoderm, respiratory system from the endoderm, and skeletal system from mesoderm. Cell differentiation leads to tissue, organ and body system formation by the time the egg is laid. There is a long running meme about chickens being descendants of the T-Rex, but it is true that chickens retain many elements of their reptilian ancestors. One of these is the influence of ambient temperature after laying an embryonic development. If you are incubating your eggs in an incubator, it's best to give the temperature at 37.7 degrees Celsius or 99.86 degrees Fahrenheit. When temperatures reach below 20 degrees Celsius, the egg becomes dormant. This is helpful when you're trying to collect enough eggs to incubate all at once. However, it's dangerous to bring the temperature above 20 degrees before incubation, as stopping and starting the incubation process will result in progressively weaker chicks. On day one, the embryonic tissue begins forming. On day two, tissue development is very visible. The blood vessels also appear. By day three, the heart is beating and the blood vessels are visible. Day four is the first really important day for incubation because it's the first day you can candle your eggs to check for viability. On day four, you should be able to see some veins surrounding a dark blob. If you can't see this, don't give up on the eggs just yet. I don't recommend beginners sacrifice their eggs after candling on day four. For first timers, I recommend you wait until day nine or 10, which is when the embryo has taken on a bird-like appearance. On day 19, the chick absorbs the yolk sac into its body, retaining all nutrients to give it strength for the huge task of hatching and resting for one or two days after. Bear in mind that bantams often won't follow this timeline as they're smaller. My Belgian Jean-Luc hatched on day 19. On day 20, the egg may pip. This means that a tiny crack appears in the center of the egg. Then the chick uses its egg tooth to unzip the egg or crack a line around the circumference of the egg. On day 21 and up to day 24, the chick will finally hatch. The chick will be exhausted and will rest for a day afterwards while it dries and fluffs up. At this stage and for the first few weeks, a common problem seen in chicks is sometimes known as pasty butt. This doesn't tend to occur in hen raised chicks because the mother will clean them, but in a brooder setting, a chick can develop a buildup of feces around its vent. You can dampen a paper towel and wipe the buildup off. Check regularly for more buildup, because if left unchecked, the feces can build up to such an extent as to prevent defecation, which can be deadly. As they mature, chicks become pullets or cockerels, depending on their sex. Pullets are hens under the age of one, while cockerels are roosters under the age of one. Some breeds, such as cream leg bars and Plymouth rocks, are sex linked, which means that you can tell the sex of the chicks at hatch or soon after. There is obviously significant desire for this trait in the commercial egg industry, where cockerels are undesirable. For the first four weeks of their life, the chicks are tiny adorable fluff balls. During this time, they depend on their mother to keep them warm since they're unable to regulate their own body temperature. The mother hen uses this time to teach the babies which foods taste the best. They also break food into easily eaten pieces and slowly introduce their babies into the flock. In this stage of life, chicks are extremely susceptible to a number of serious diseases. One is coccidiosis, 
which is mostly dangerous for young animals. Coccidia are a protozoan parasite which most animals are exposed to and build natural immunity to, but young animals are especially vulnerable to disease. The virus is ingested orally through a contaminated environment. Signs that this disease is impacting your flock is varying sizes among chicks of the same age and breed. Coccidiosis causes stunted growth, so it's possible that any small chicks you have could be infected and have a chronic case, which is usually not deadly. A more serious case will show signs such as diarrhea, dehydration and listlessness. A useful treatment if you notice symptoms in your chicks is Emprolium. It can be expensive, but worth it if it's needed. You can generally find it at your local stock feed. Another common cause of chicken demise is failure to thrive from breeding weak chicks. This happens when you hatch eggs from young hens. I'll tell you more about that later. At five weeks, the chicks enter the teenage stage where they begin to resemble miniature versions of an adult chicken. At five weeks, their mother will begin to reject them because they won't need her for warmth anymore. She'll peck at them when they try to crawl under her or if they hover nearby while she's eating. Sometimes the mother will brood for much longer though, depending on when she's ready to recommence egg laying. At 16 weeks, the chickens reach their full height and look identical to their parents, though many cockerels will take longer to grow out. This young pullet is an Ostrovolt cross Faberol. She is not quite point of lay. She is 16 weeks old, which is the end of her teenage period. She's in puberty. There she is beside her father. She's dwarfed by him. But she's more or less the size of an adult chicken. She's, her height is about where it will be as an adult. Uh, she just needs to pack on some fat and some more fluff. Yeah, this is the puberty stage. At 18 the weeks, the pullets are at point of lay, which means their first egg is imminent. I call this their maiden egg, and don't be alarmed if it has a tiny amount of blood smeared on it. While a lot of blood with every egg could be a warning sign, it's normal for the maiden egg to have a little bit of blood on it. My, my young Australop here, Belinda, is point of lay. As you can see, she more or less blends in with the adult hens. She is, yeah, fully grown. They should be laying, honestly, any day. As you can see, her face is starting to turn a bit redder. Uh, when it goes as red as Beatrice or Rosalia, that's when she starts. Pullets will lay all the way <laughs> through their first winter, which is one of the reasons why it's good to have a flock with varying ages represented. At 18 months, the pullet goes through her first molt. Many people believe that pullets produce weak chicks that die from failure to thrive. So for this reason, I never breed from a hen until after her first molt when her eggs are large and support a large chick. 18 month old roosters are in the prime of their life at full fertility and vigor. This is the best age. He's a rooster in the prime of his life. This is one year old Bertram who is molting. It takes a very long time for roosters to recover from their molt, which is why I'm still saying he's not looking his best due to molting. But he's no longer a cockerel. As of January, he turned one, January 2024. So he is, yes, in the prime of his life. Peak fertility, peak beauty when his feathers all grow back. The hen will lay very well for the first three to five years, but it's at the five year mark that her production will take a sharp nosedive, placing her into retirement. She will lay very sporadically after five years, if at all, but she is still useful for fertilizer and companionship, so I keep my older hens. Roosters around this age have extremely reduced fertility, and for this reason, many are culled. My, my three roosters are still relatively young at three, two, and one, and are still highly fertile. Bertha and Rosalia here are in the retirement stage of their life. They are still laying. Bertha is in springtime. Bertha lays quite well, actually. But... Yeah, she is starting to slow down. Um, those missing feathers are from mating, not 
give us her age or anything like that. So yeah, she's slowing down. Um, I, I do think I've got at least another three or four years left in her. She is five in a few months. As you can see from her red face when she looks up from her food, she's still there. She lays pretty well. That's her breeding. Oscar Lord's got very good lays. Marigold here is also retired. Uh, this is Marigold right here. Now, unlike Bertha, because she's a Brahma and they are the best players in the world, she has almost entirely finished laying. Um, I haven't seen a, an egg from this at, at all this spring, which is fine by me. I love her company. She's between years 5 and 10, though there are many exceptions, the chicken will begin to decline, ready for death. This decline can take many shapes. For some, a lifetime of laying can result in ovarian cancer, while for others it's a simple matter of slowing down steadily until the end comes. When my chickens die, they're buried under one of my many fruit trees. For me, it's a tribute to them and their lifetime of service. Their body feeds my trees, which continue to feed my family. It's a beautiful cycle of beginning and conclusion. And that's the amazing life cycle of chickens, from eggs to chicks to mature hens and roosters. It's a fascinating process that ensures the continuation of these beloved farm animals. I believe that everyone should have the opportunity to own poultry. So if this video inspired you, please go out and get yourself some eggs to begin the life cycle for yourself. Let me know in the comments what your favourite part of the life cycle of chickens is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.